I'm Ron Cook and I'm Chairman of York Civic Trust and I hope you're going to join me on this short tour around the city where we can show you why it's such a special place, why we want to keep it that way and why the Civic Trust is one of the largest membership organisations of its kind in the country. So as we go round I hope you'll see why we care about the city and why we hope you'll join us. The Eye of York ancient centre of the Three Ridings is surrounded by grand civic architecture. The Castle Museum is situated within the old female prison, designed by York architect John Carr, and the earlier debtor's prison, probably designed by Sir William Wakefield and inspired both by Wren and Vanborough. Another of Carr's works, York Assizes, still operates today as the Crown Court. Clifford's Tower overlooks the Eye of York, a popular tourist site, it's a medieval seat of justice, as well as the scene of an anti-Semitic massacre in 1190. Looking from Clifford's Tower across the city roofscape, York Minster rises majestically in the distance. In between lies All Saints Pavement, with its lantern tower, a beacon visible from over 20 miles away. St Mary's on Castlegate has an elegant spire and is now home for contemporary art exhibitions. Sitting next to it is Fairfax House, the finest Georgian townhouse in England and also the headquarters of the York Civic Trust. Fairfax House was restored by the Civic Trust in the 1980s. Its stunningly beautiful interiors have survived the building being used as both a dance hall and also a cinema at the beginning of the last century. The Great Staircase is a highlight of the building, as is its famous Noel Terry collection of English furniture and clocks. A world-class collection of Georgian furniture set in a fabulous mid-18th century interior, something to be savoured by any enthusiast of our heritage. Five minutes' walk from Fairfax House, the Merchant Adventurers Hall has stood in its beautiful location by the River Foss for over 650 years. Open for public use as a functioning museum, wedding and hospitality venue, it remains the finest medieval guild hall in the world. There are three main rooms here. The Great Hall, with its fabulous timber frame, where medieval merchants first gathered to conduct business and to socialise. The Undercroft, which was used as an almshouse to help the sick and the poor. And the Chapel, which offered spiritual care. The Shambles is often called Europe's best preserved medieval street. It was voted the most picturesque street in Britain on Google Street View. The city's butcher's market used to be located here, from which it gets its Saxon name Fleshamals, meaning the street of the butchers. One of the most distinctive city centre buildings is the Mansion House, home of the Lord Mayor of York. It was restored in 1998 by the York Civic Trust, an amazing transformation that returned it to a standard worthy of this great city. From high on the roof of the Mansion House, St Helens Square stands out, restored by the Civic Trust in the 1980s with Yorkshire stone and gas lamps. Spend an afternoon on the square and you'll rub shoulders with people directly connected to 70% of the Earth's population. The busy shopping street Stonegate leads the eye back up towards another great view. York Minster's Rose Window. One of the city's great surprise views and a lovely introduction to this magnificent building. Sitting in front of the Minster is the statue of Emperor Constantine. Commissioned by the Trust in 1998, it commemorates his proclamation in York as Roman Emperor in the year 306 AD. Constantine profoundly altered the course of Western civilization by converting to Christianity. This in turn led to the building of the Minster a thousand years later. On the edge of the city centre, one of the six gateways into York, Bootham Bar, stands near to the site of the old Roman entrance to the city. It might not be here at all but for William Etty, the artist and early conservationist, whose statue stands proudly on Exhibition Square. 
Etty raised a public outcry in the early 19th century when the walls, along with the bars, were facing demolition in a misguided attempt to modernise the city. Behind Etty stands the art gallery and next to that the magnificent King's Manor. The manor was originally built to house the abbots of St Mary's Abbey in the 15th century, but it's now part of the University of York. The 18th century saw an explosion of building in York to accommodate wealthy visiting tourists and the Yorkshire gentry. Some of the best examples of Georgian houses can be found here on Micklegate, strategically placed for easy access to the ever-popular York Racecourse. York is a river city, the reason why the Romans chose York as their northern headquarters. The Vikings came here for the same reason. The rivers Ouse and Foss formed an integral part of the medieval defences and have defined the development of the city to the present day. Well here we are nearly at the end of our journey and it's a really good place to stop because we're on the city walls which have been protected by previous generations of conservationists but if you look over my shoulder you can see three buildings which sum up really what the Trust is about. On the left hand side you can see the Minster which is one of the finest buildings of its kind in Europe. Then just to the right of that you can see the old Northeastern Railway headquarters. That's recently been refurbished to create a wonderful new five-star hotel. And then just to the right of that, this is a very important structure. It is the first railway station in York built by George Hudson and it's one of the oldest railway stations in the world. And what we're trying to do, working with the York City Council and a number of other groups, is to refurbish it in a way which creates the new city offices. As a result, we'll preserve the old building, develop it to new functions and end up with something which will last for the next hundred years. I hope you've enjoyed our little tour of the city and that we've been able to whet your appetite for what the Civic Trust is interested in and what it's doing. We hope you'll join us and if you do, we look forward to hearing from you.